Do we have too much government? We need to put uh, people in ahead of corporate profits. This system is so lopsided. This threat is a real threat to democracy. And I think that's really important. That's something we haven't been doing in this country for a long time. Where do you start? What do you do? How do you do it? Access to Democracy and other Egan Community Television programming is supported by Thomson Reuters, makers of Westlaw Next and based in Egan. Through Westlaw Next and other innovative online services, Thomson Reuters is the world's leading source of intelligent information for businesses and professionals. Online at ThomsonReuters.com and by U.S. Federal Credit Union the member-owned financial institution offering service, value, and experience you can trust to the greater Twin Cities community. Hi, I'm Roxanne Meshar. Welcome to Access to Democracy. My guest today is Mike Hughes, who is one of the advisory panel members for Lebanon Hills Regional Park. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank so you for nice, the invitation. I appreciate it. Nice to have you with us. So we thought it would be interesting to have you um, with us on the show and tell a little bit about your experience being on the panel. And I think we'll, before we even do that, maybe start a little mm -hmm. bit with your background and how you happen to be on the panel. So okay. share a little um, bit. Liz Workman contacted me in early 2014 and asked if I would serve on this advisory panel. And um, I think that she contacted me because I was on the Burnsville Parks and Natural Resources Commission for 10 years from 1997 to 2008. And then also um, I participated in the Dakota County Farmland and Natural Areas Program for several years. Um, and right now I'm a member of the um, Black Dog Watershed, Watershed Management Organization. That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I have a lot of um, experience with natural resources. And, um, and park planning. And, and clearly interest in this oh, area very much. as yeah, well. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. um, so you bring all that uh, kind of expertise or background mm -hmm. and experience with you to this panel, which is, is pretty nice. Yes. Um, you also bring a um, corporate background with you to the panel as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So maybe share, if you little like, a little bit okay. about that. Um, I work for 3M mm -hmm. in the food safety group. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a technical service specialist, and so I do a lot of uh, scientific types of projects. Okay. Uh, reviewing experimental plans and reviewing experimental results with our products. Um, so I tend to look at things from a science-based uh, point of view. Which is, which is nice. And I think when you have a panel, too, to bring people with many different perspectives and Absolutely. points of view, it helps. And I know um, we may talk a little bit about the diversity of that mm -hmm. uh, panel and group later, too, so you can share a little bit. But um, so, so maybe... Um, she, uh, after she invited you, what made you decide to say yes, to say yes, I'll serve on the, on the panel? Well, I think it's important to do volunteer work. And okay. since I've developed that, that knowledge and background in natural resources issue, I think that's my best opportunity to um, uh, learn new things for myself mm -hmm. and, I mean, for my benefit, and then also to um, participate in, in um, growing the community and doing the right things so. um, for the community. So giving something back Absolutely. To, to the community you're a part yeah. of. So. I think it's a duty that we all have yeah. and this is my opportunity to, to uh, fulfill that. Interesting you say that too because I think a lot of people in their younger years would like to but they're in those that busy time oh, of life and absolutely. they really don't have time to do it but then we get to a certain age and we do have time. Our kids are become adults, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. are in college, they move on and you actually have a little space in your life to give something back. Absolutely. You know? enjoy nice. our grandchildren for yes. little pieces of time yes but there is as you said quite a bit of time yeah. to get involved in these kinds of issues as well which is nice I mm -hmm. think um, so I know you have a, a little bit of a background to share in um, 
your participation on the panel and how the process worked and people our viewers might be interested especially not even if they're in uh, the direct or immediate vicinity of mm -hmm. Lebanon Hills Regional Park but for people in the wider Twin Cities or state area right. regardless um, as as to how a panel uh, might function or this particular panel function and maybe you can share a little bit about okay. your experience on right. the panel. Well the reason that the Dakota County Commissioners created this panel is that there was a lot of controversy about some aspects of the plan that was put together in 2013. Um, and so they gave us a set of questions to answer. They gave us a clear charter. Um, and there were two people from each district in Do Dakota County. Um, and then there were several at-large members. It was a very diverse group. Uh, I, we started with 20 people, mm -hmm. ended up with 16 or 17. I'm not sure of okay. the final number, but it was at least 16. Um, and we did a lot of open discussion. Mm -hmm. um, Dakota County hired uh, a professional mediator uh, to, to uh, facilitate the meetings, which I thought was an excellent idea mm -hmm. because, of course, she's trained mm -hmm. to, to be impartial mm -hmm. and to, to not take sides. Right. Um, and as we went through the open discussions, there was a lot of different aspects we looked at. Um, but near the end, when we had to finally make some de decisions on the recommendations that we make, she introduced this um, audience polling system, which is an electronic system in which uh, she used a PowerPoint to put a question up on the screen. And then um, we all had these little electronic devices that are like a TV remote. And then um, on the question, number one would be, yes, I agree with this statement, mm -hmm. or I can live with this statement, mm -hmm. or I do not support this. And the statement would be something along the lines of one of the options that we have in planning Lebanon Hills Park. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would all watch the little tally of the votes, and as soon as everybody had voted, the facilitator would then show the test results in a bar graph type of a thing. So you get an immediate sense exactly. as to where you are as a group, at least, it, even if uh, maybe not matching your exact personal opinion, but where the group is in total, yes. and how far disparate um, maybe the opinions are, mm -hmm. whether they were all right. yes, no, or something in between, or where, th where things fell. Exactly. So. And in addition to the voting, before we actually voted, the facilitator went through a PowerPoint presentation showing images, maps, whatever was pertinent to that question. And then um, there was an open discussion, uh, but it was time because we had to get through a mm -hmm. lot of questions. So it was 10 minutes or 15 minutes, depending on the topic. And then the voting. Um, and then after we voted, she recorded the results. On to the next question. Interesting. Yeah, I thought it was a very democratic process because, yeah. of course, in a group of 16 mm -hmm. to 20 people, it's really difficult. It is. Uh, I function as a facilitator, and eight is ideal, eight mm -hmm. to ten. And when you start to get beyond that, it gets tricky. The conversation can mm -hmm. go on um, yeah. forever. So mm -hmm. you really do have to kind of time block it and uh, maybe circle back if you need right. to. But uh, for important issues, but but that is one way to get through that process, which works, I think. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And the criteria for uh, putting these test results into the report that went to the Dakota County Commissioners was that um, if uh, two people had disagreed, um, that was still acceptable, that was judged to be mm -hmm. consensus, but if more than two people had disagreed with, with the proposal, then that was put into the non-consensus okay. category. Okay, interesting. Um, and in the report, which I'm, I'm hoping that everyone gets a chance to look at, because there's, there's just a lot of um, misinformation. You know, since you mentioned it, we'll mention it a couple times, but why don't you just, for starters, where can they go get this report? And then I'll come back and ask you this at the end of the show, too. Okay. But just so people know where they can go. Sure. Um, the Dakota County website mm -hmm. has a link to this report. Um, I think if you do a web search on mm -hmm. Lebanon Hills Regional Park, you'll see this. There are a number of other things there, too. Okay. But if you go to the Dakota County website, you'll see this actual report. And it would be Citizens... Um, Citizens Advisory Panel. Citizens Advisory Panel. And if you want to go and learn um, learn a lot more about the mm -hmm. details and how things worked and what happened, yeah. you uh, go to the source. So that would be a good yeah. place to go. Yeah. So. And one of the points I want to make, and everyone can see this in the report too, is that we were all very concerned about damaging Lebanon Hills Park. Right. It's a beautiful place mm -hmm. and it does have a unique um, outdoors wilderness character. And we tried to balance um, the need to provide um, what everybody wants in that park. In other words, to provide the greatest benefit for the largest number of people yes. Yes. against 
doing damage. We, yeah. we certainly don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned see that before too, and that is an interesting guideline, greatest yes. benefit um, for the greatest number of people, yeah. um, which is a nice uh, guideline to keep in mind. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, when, when I go into these panels, I don't feel like I represent myself. I represent Dakota County, mm -hmm. the people who live in Dakota County. Um, and so I try to take it all into account. And we talked a little bit about uh, handicapped people mm -hmm. or elderly people. Accessibility, mm -hmm. exactly. People who really aren't able or aren't willing to, to use some of the... Which is quite a big percentage of the, the population, it in is. fact. It's not a tiny percent. And, and for the elderly people, of course, we have the, the demographic bubble of right. the baby boom generation mm -hmm. who are approaching the age at which um, many of them don't feel confident walking on unpaved trails in right. a park. Yeah. They would certainly love to continue visiting the park because it is a beautiful place. Um, and they have more time, of course, to do that now. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's important. Yeah. You mentioned um, that you had a, um, people come from the community and there was a gentleman there who um, was maybe had some accessibility issues yes. and he had an impact on you. He, he did. Yeah, and maybe explain how that, you don't have to say his name, but you know uh -huh. how that, ha what happened. Well, um, he, he didn't really push hard uh, on his needs, but he kept reminding us um, that we do want to make the, this beautiful part, uh, the center part, all of the park actually, accessible to everyone, mm -hmm. including people who have mobility challenges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so to think about um, allowing some people but not others for whatever reason, exactly. when the person is sitting there in front of you, yes. uh, wh how can you say, I think you mentioned, how could I turn around and say, well, everyone except you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can't come to the park. I understand that. We can't make everything accessible right. to everybody. Again, but as much as possible. For yeah, as many in this as case, possible. it's well within our reach to make the, the center part of Lebanon Hills Park accessible to people who are mobility challenged. And there were nice compromises, I think, that were made regarding that, too, there which were. you can talk about okay. in a little bit. Yeah, um, that's one of the myths, the urban myths that seemed to be floating around, that so there was no opportunity for compromise. Well, we actually did compromise. Mm -hmm. We moved the paved trail from the center part of the park to the western edge of the park. Um, there were four, I think, different alternative routes that we voted on. And there was a consensus opinion that um, we, we could build that paved trail uh, in the position that we came up with without damaging the park. Mm -hmm. and, and so the uh, advisory panel did, in fact, um, opt to, to do that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the recommendation, of course, that's in the, in the report and that we made to the Dakota County Commissioners. Do you want to share a little bit of the map or the, the um, yeah, trail Yeah, we can on do that. that. Sure. I have it right here. See. Um, it, it does a nice job, I think, and I don't know How do maybe, um, if you want to speak to it first and then I'll show and they can zoom okay. in. Hopefully we'll see if that works. Okay. Um, well, um, there's a, a blue dotted line that shows the original uh, path that was put into the 2013 plan. Mm -hmm. Um, then the, the red plan or the red path uh, that's a little further west in the park is the, we call it the modified 2001 plan because okay. that's exactly what it was. There was a plan in 2001, but we moved it a little bit from that position because uh, that the 2001 original path took it through some very hilly terrain, um, which of course would be very challenging for the people who were trying to uh, build this right. for to be able to uh, negotiate. So we ended up with this plan, which moves it again further to the west and further to the north of the park to keep it away from the central part of the park. So, I don't know if you're able to zoom in at all um, to show that, mm -hmm. but it um, might be nice for our viewers to be able to see. We'll see if they can get it up there. <laughs> so here's the, the blue dotted line right here, which you can see, and then it was moved initially this to this red line and then it was even moved, um, pushed a little further west from that, so pushed out here. Well, a actually, the, the, the one that's closest to the edge yes. was the 2001 plan. Right. So the modified 2001 plan that we actually recommended to the Dakota County, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, Dakota County Commissioners earlier this mm -hmm. year is the um, 
the plan that's in between those two. Oh, in between. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Very yep. good. So Thank you. it's a compromise. Yes, Indeed. yes, it yes. is. Um, so the other thing, too, um, I know that has come up is that um, there's some potential, I think, um, for erosion mm -hmm. that you have noticed, too, yes. in the time that you've served on the panel. Yes, that's true. Um, one of the experts who came in to um, present information for us to make our decisions was a, a water specialist. And he talked about the potential for erosion in Lebanon Hills Park. Uh, it turns out that the park is sort of a uh, catch basin mm -hmm. for the entire area. Um, and recently we've had an increasing number of these torrential downpours, um, which are a challenge, of course, because the storm system has to handle a very large volume of water in a short time. So I'm concerned about protecting the park against erosion from these torrential downpours that are becoming increasingly likely. Yes, um, yes. In fact, I know that the city of Egan and Dakota County have to work out a plan for one of the surrounding neighborhoods because, um, again, in these torrential downpours, some of the homes are actually getting flooded. So it's a concern in the area in general, not yeah. even just yeah. Lebanon Hills. Exactly. Um, what do you think they'll um, do, or are they starting to consider that as an issue? Or are they working with it at all? Or are there plans to work with that erosion? Or um? Um, that wasn't part of our charter okay. for this, so we didn't touch it. So not for this panel. Not mm -hmm. for this panel. Okay. That's right. Um, I, I when I get into these citizen advisory panels. I like to follow what they've told us to do mm -hmm. because my experience is that if we wander too far astray, they'll ignore our <laughs> recommendations <laughs> anyway. Um, so we, we didn't address so that. So that would be a task for the next panel to maybe I focus so. on. And it's an important one that needs yeah. to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, I know too, you might want to tell viewers who aren't up to date with Lebanon Hills that there was already also um, some changes made with regard to where the um, uh, trail goes. I think there's a trail, the larger trail is going to go now just around the lake, or maybe you can correct or explain how yeah, that works. Uh, as I said, there were a number of questions the Dakota County Commissioners wanted us to answer. One of them was about where we could put a, a loop trail mm -hmm. around the lake. Um, and we decided that McDonough Lake, which is right next to the visitor center, yes. was an excellent spot for yes. that. Um, I remember several of the comments from the panel were along the lines that a lot of uh, school groups bring the kids out for uh, a field trip and that's a great place to take them because it's about a 30 minute to one hour walk. Mm -hmm. um, it's well defined uh, so that no one's going to wander off and mm -hmm. disappear. Um, and I think a lot of people actually like that type of a, a, an amenity in the mm -hmm. parks. Um, they like to know, first they like to walk around bodies of water on paved trails. Yeah. I remember from the, the Burnsville Parks and Natural Resources Commission, that turned out as the number one amenity that people liked in mm -hmm. our parks. Um, so we wanted to do that. We looked at Holland Lake. We, uh, those were the two biggest alternatives we had. And it, I think that it's better at McDonough Lake because it's right next to the visitor center. Mm -hmm. People can park their cars, jump there. out, yeah. and make that. Again, we're, we're trying to provide the greatest benefit for everybody's needs. So for people who want to just park the car, take a walk, get back in, on to the next thing. McDonough Lake is really a great place to have a paved trail going around uh, that lake. Um, Holland Lake was a little different. It's a bigger lake. Some of the areas on the south and the east part of the lake are untouched. So it would be, I think, a mistake to, to plow through that. and Start and going through Yeah. That. Plus, the north part of Holland Lake is a beautiful picnic spot. A lot of people like that. Let's leave yeah. it the way it is. Yeah. So the panel did um, listen to the um, uh, concerns of citizens oh, and yes. uh, maybe speak a little bit about how that happened. So you got a lot of pushback or a lot of letters, whatever, and well, what the panel did. As yeah. you, you were on it, so you could observe what yes. was going on there. Well, but we, we held 10 meetings, and they were three hours, a little longer in some cases, each. Um, and frankly, during the meetings, I went back and forth from my opinion, my opinion changed a couple of times. Okay. So um, you were influenced by what you heard and oh yes. what other people had to say. And yeah, good. absolutely. Um, but after the last meeting in December, 
um, there was just a flurry of letters to the editor in various newspapers. Mm -hmm. And that's where I noticed that there are these, these myths floating around. Mm -hmm. uh, one I remember is a picture of a construction zone in, in one of the parks. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is all torn up. Mm -hmm. And that's what it looks like after you do the disruption, but before you restore it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a little bit like taking a picture of your house in the middle of a remodel where you've torn everything mm -hmm. out before you replace it. Um, so it's sort of a partial truth, mm -hmm. but the rest of the story is not there, which is you're going to restore this area and it's going to look even better than it did before. Uh -huh. And I, th I think that one of the concerns with, with some of the people who um, have expressed these concerns is that maybe this is a slippery slope type of a thing. Mm -hmm. The trail, that is, mm -hmm. is a slippery slope type of thing that leads to completely modernizing or, or completely developing mm -hmm. the park, which no, I don't think is going to happen. Again, in the report, there are several places where we mentioned that development has to be done very carefully mm -hmm. um, I in this park because it's such a beautiful place. And also, uh, we recommended that the trail itself uh, be designed in such a way that it minimizes potential damage from uh, water erosion, um, from some of the other uh, factors that that would detract from that park. So, so people in the panel really were interested in doing what's best for the park, Absolutely. what's best for the community. Absolutely. Um, listening to uh, concerns and then yes. responding to those as well. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. And and taking all of that into account. Mm -hmm. um, tell us what happens next. Now we've had a vote by the right. um, advisory panel, yes. and what, how does the process work going forward for okay. viewers? Um, after the advis advisory panel submitted the report to the Dakota County Commissioners, they held a vote on it and it went forward. Um, after that step, then it goes to the Met Council okay. and they approve or disapprove it. Um, I'm not sure what the next step after that is. I think that if the Met Council approves, we, we move forward. Okay. Um, one of the other concerns during the meetings that I heard repeatedly and frankly in almost every meeting was where are we going to get the money in order to pay for this? In, in government financing, oftentimes first you make your plan, then you find out, you figure out where you're going to get your money because there's, a, there's an elaborate series of interconnections and um, grants that are available. Um, so if you can't fund it, you don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you find the funding through grants or through tax revenues from the county mm -hmm. directly, then you move forward. Then you can move forward. Yeah. Um, we have a little bit of time left, but okay. maybe you want to talk about your priorities, um, what was important for you in Lebanon Hills and in moving forward. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can address those. Okay. It's a, it's a beautiful place. I've spent time hiking over there um, several years ago. Just tell a quick personal story if I sure, can. Sure, sure. Um, my son went uh, with the Minnesota National Guard to Iraq. Mm -hmm. um, and before he left, we asked him, well, what would you like to do mm -hmm. to, to really lock in some great memories <laughs> while you're there? Lebanon Hills Park. Uh -huh. So we went over to Lebanon Hills Park and we hiked around for a while. Uh -huh. And he just memorized as much of that as he uh -huh. could and took that place with him uh -huh. while he was there. And so I think it helped him to get through so that. So it has real meaning for your family. It does. It yeah. absolutely does. Yeah. And very important, I don't want to goof it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think you've mentioned, too, um, some of the priorities, at least for you, is the maintaining the character of the park and yeah. addressing mobility issues as many people as mm -hmm. possible, um, have access with least amount of disruption. Yes. Um, and then I think, too, increasing visits to the park. So oh, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. One of the early meetings um, included, I can't remember who this was, but one of the consultants told us that the number of visits to the park is significantly lower than expected compared to other regional parks with the mm -hmm. same uh, size, characteristics, and all of that. So the Dakota County staff really would like to find a way to attract more people to Lebanon Hills Park. And they believe the way to do that is this trail and some of the other amenities, the McDonough Lake uh, circle mm -hmm. route around the lake. Uh, again, it's all listed in the, the report, but they want to increase the number of visits to nice. the park. Nice. Um, before we um, uh, end, I want to ask too, I know you have a, something you like to do that's fun and uses um, 
even um, wood from mm -hmm. places like forests or whatever but sure. that you like to do in your spare time and many people enjoy. So maybe you can yeah. share a little bit about what that is. I like to do wood carving projects. Ah. Um, I enjoy the European styles. Actually, I don't know if I can mention specific places, names. Yes, yes. Um, the, uh, the, uh, Oh, um, the Westerheim. Okay, okay. <laughs> the Westerheim Museum um, puts on classes every year uh -huh. in um, Decorah, Iowa. And I've done that for so many years, I can't remember how many. <laughs> 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 and uh, I actually have a, a stockpile of projects I've made down there because nice. I enjoy making them more than people enjoy yeah, displaying what them. What <laughs> kinds of things do you like to play? I like the Norwegian style. Ah. Uh, the Westerheim Museum is a, a, a Norwegian folk art museum. Oh, interesting. And so there's, there's an instructor there who I really enjoy, um, and he teaches the Norwegian style. And uh, I actually, this year, I'm going to put one of my pieces into their contest and see if... And which piece is it? What is the piece? What do you make? What's the, what are the things? Are they animals you carve, or they're, uh, what are they that you... It's, it's called acanthus, okay. and it's stylized leaves and in various patterns ah. uh, in the Norwegian style. Very nice. Yeah. And so would they be um, architectural decor? Yes. Is that what you use them for? Yeah. Okay. Some of them are wall hangings. I made one oh, nice. clock um, okay. with some decorations around it. So I have a bookshelf yeah. um, with that same style. Very interesting. And yeah. what kind of wood do you like to use the most? Um, I like basswood. Ah. Um, and then the, the second best is, um, uh, what's it? Butternut. Oh, uh, butternut. is also really, oh. yeah, really wow. high quality wood. And they're good because, uh, they're good for wood carving because um, they both allow you to put a lot of detail into the wood and it doesn't splinter or chip and I'm sure you can imagine how frustrating it is to get to the last step and whoops, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. break it off. <laughs> but that doesn't happen with these woods. Because they're so. hard enough. Yeah. Do you stain them at all or you leave them natural or how do they get oiled or what happens? Uh, I try to, to leave them natural okay. because okay. those two woods both have a very nice uh, natural Beautiful. appearance. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, thanks for asking about that. <laughs> I don't get a chance to talk about that very much. Thank well, you. Well, we live in a, in a place that has an abundance of wood and natural environment, and there's Indeed. a lot of people in the Twin Cities area that are into woodworking and mm -hmm. um, and enjoy it. So I just thought uh -huh. they might be interested to know. Sure. We have just um, a minute left. I'm going to okay. ask you to remind people where they should go um, okay. to learn more about what's going on with Lebanon Hills and okay. what you recommend they read. Yes. Uh, that was a major point that I wanted to make today, that there are a lot of... Um, myths floating around about this plan about uh, I mean some of the letters to the editor are taking kind of an angry tone and there's there's really no need for that I think everyone should take a look at the actual report it's on the Dakota County Parks website okay. uh, I think if you do a web search there when you get there yeah when, Lebanon when Hills you, Lebanon Park. Hills Regional Park sure. maybe put the word plan at the mm -hmm. end it will um, come up and then there are a bunch of different sites that have that kind of information, but look for the Dakota County site. Okay, um, and, and read the actual report. And exactly. get the actual facts of yeah. what's going on there. Exactly. Um, th there have been so many letters to the editor. There are you know, newspaper websites that will come up on that search and various other things, but take a look at the actual report itself. The actual county site. Yes. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing what it's like to be on the panel. Uh -huh. and. Um, the process that you went through and what's going on so uh, that people know there's everybody really is concerned and wants the best for Lebanon Absolutely. Hills and wants it to last for many generations going forward Certainly. and keep the unique care of the character of the park and um, make it accessible for as many people as possible so we can mm -hmm. all enjoy it so uh, really wonderful that you could be mm -hmm. with us thank you nice summary very well said <laughs> okay. thank you and thank you for the day. bye now